Hello and welcome back. I realized the other day that I don't have a lot of videos showing how I make dried spice. So today we're going to be doing one of my favorites, which is a Cajun style spice. This is one I've been working on for a long time and I call it Chili Chumps Killer Cajun Spice. This is one of the recipes from my new recipe book, which has gone on sale recently, and you can buy your own one at chilichump.com forward slash shop. This is on page 140, the Killer Cajun Seasoning. So go check that out. For those of you that have already bought one of my books, thank you so much. It really does help the channel out. Let's talk about the ingredients that we have here. First up, I'm obviously making a very large batch. We can see loads and loads of ingredients. And that's because if you want to buy some, then you're able to once this video goes out. But if you want to make this for yourself at home, all you need to do is divide everything by 10. I've made it as easy as I can in terms of just divide by 10 and you should be fine. So for example, the first ingredient we have here is the Carolina Reaper. We have 10 of those, so you just need to use one. We have peppercorns over here, which 125 grams. You just need to use 12.5 grams. So that makes it quite easy in terms of scaling this down. So let's talk through the ingredients. We have 10 Carolina Reaper. We have some smoked paprika. We have 250 grams of that. 250 grams of cayenne powder. And I don't have everything out on the table here because I don't have enough space. We have 250 grams of dried onion. So I like it like this rather than powdered. You can get powdered. I'm going to obviously powder this anyway with my spice blender. but. If you get it powdered, I find that you lose quite a lot of the flavor. Uh, it just comes out better if you leave it in bigger pieces like this, but we'll blend that up. So that's 250 grams of dried onion. We have 250 grams of garlic. And this here is granules, not powder. If you can get garlic like that, rather than powdered or granulated like this, then that would be preferable for the same reason that I've got these pieces of onion it just holds the flavor better but that's all i could get hold of at this moment over here we have 125 grams of thyme as well as 250 grams of oregano just all mixed in here we have 250 grams of salt i'm using pink himalayan rock salt this is lovely stuff 50 grams of lemongrass this one here was the latest addition that i've added i think this just it just finished this off perfectly in the last batch that I made. So that is just awesome inside this. And that's pretty much it. So we need to get to blending. Some of this will be blending, some of this we won't. And uh, what I'm going to be using to actually put this all in is a bucket. So I have a few of these food grade buckets and it's going to make it nice and easy. Now, I must recommend that when you are using buckets if you're processing any food like this treat it the same way you would if you were making a hot sauce make sure everything is sanitized even though these are dry there's still a risk you want to make sure that everything's as clean as you can get it now i'm using this spice blender here it's the largest one i could get without going industrial and uh, it's quite nice it detaches so i can just pour the the mix out into the bowl um, and it has this thing that goes on top so this is what I'm going to be using and uh, let's get started so first up we're going to be putting in these greens so the oregano and the thyme I'm going to put that straight in here I'm not blending this up it's just better this way give it a bit of texture to the final product that there is 250 grams of the onion and it smells just delicious so we need to start processing this obviously this here is a bit smaller than what's there, so we're going to have to do it in multiple batches. With this here, you just put that over the top and push down. That does an amazing job. We need to get that into the bucket, and we need to do the rest of the onion in the same way. smells delicious the lemon so fresh just want to grind that up a little bit more there we go so it 
it's a little bit of a coarse grind. There's still some particles in there, but that should be just fine. Next up, let's do the Carolina Reapers. So we're gonna need 10 of those. Okay, this I'm gonna let settle because it's just gonna, it's just gonna make me choke if it gets out. So let's just leave that for a couple of seconds. Remember when you are using dried peppers that you want this to be crispy dry, else you're just gonna introduce moisture into the mix and you're gonna end up having this clump up. Oh, that looks evil. <clears throat> wow, oh, jeez. Oh. <coughs> Smells nice. Um, wow. <clears throat> oh, jeez. Okay, let's uh, do the <clears throat> let's do the peppercorns. <clears throat> Carolina Reapers, and uh, you know peppers like that, like the Seven Pot Primo. They <coughs> they smell delicious, but <coughs> wow, they are evil. Oh. There we go, lovely, beautiful mixed peppercorns. We have a beautiful color in there. I hope you can actually make it out, but... Oh, beautiful. So the peppercorns are going in, and all we've got left then to add is the 250 grams of paprika and the 250 grams of cayenne powder. Unfortunately, the KN and paprika is not my own. I did have to buy it in, but it's good quality stuff. I do suggest getting smoked paprika. That really makes a difference with this. Gives it just that extra bit of flavor that really comes out nicely in this. So we're gonna add that in and we are pretty much done. I just need to give this a good old shake, get it all mixed up, and we're gonna have a beautiful spice at the end. So one thing I do wanna point out, if you want to follow my recipe and you don't like things as hot as maybe some people do, like myself, you can leave out the Carolina Reaper and this is still going to be a delicious Cajun spice. Might not be a killer, but it's going to be very tasty nonetheless. So let's give that a shake and give it a taste. One last thing to point out before I do give this a shake. Make sure that this bucket is dry. Whatever you use to mix it up in, well, everything you use, make sure it's as dry as you can get it. I actually ended up using my heat gun to make sure that it was completely dry. Uh, it also helps obviously with sanitizing, but mostly it was <laughs> just to give this a proper drying because I don't want this stuff clumping up. Oh, look at that. That is just perfect. The spice is now ground up, mixed up and ready to use. This goes great with so many different things. It's just a great spice to have on the side of your kitchen and just sprinkle it on your food, whether it's fish, chicken, or even vegetables, it is delicious. And today I'm going to be testing it out by doing some chicken wings. That is super tasty. Gotta love the uh, blend of spices there. It really is phenomenally good. I would say the spice is, it's a bit of a builder. Um, I'd say for the average person, this would be edging on too hot, but for most chili heads, this would probably be <laughs> your, everyday sort of spice that you'd enjoy it is so 
tasty, it really is. Sorry, I'm gonna have some more. I haven't actually eaten yet today, so. Mm. So of course, if you do want this to blow your head off properly, just increase the amount of the Carolina Reaper that's in there. Yeah, the, this, the, oh, the flavors, they're really good. Um, lips are burning a bit. Uh, the burn is mainly actually on the lips and a little bit on the tongue, not the throat. And that's what I kind of find with scotch bonnets. When you scotch bonnets with this, the burn sits at the back of the throat and it's not a very comfortable burn. This one, really good. So. All I got to do is, uh, well, first I'm going to finish off my chicken wings, but then we're going to package this up and get it ready to sell to you guys. The good news is I am going to be using these bags, which means that I can package them and send them as a large letter. And that definitely saves on postage costs, especially for the folks that are outside the UK. Now there are only going to be around 35 packets of this. I actually have some more reapers drying at the moment, so I'll, I'll have some more to make a whole another batch. And uh, we'll see if you guys like this. I'll make another batch and we'll get a bit more stock out there. So let me finish my chicken wings and then I'm going to show you how we're going to pack this. It's pretty cool. And if you are selling your own spices like I'm doing, then uh, you might pick up a couple tips. This here is the bag that I'm going to be using. I have a whole bunch of them. And the nice thing with this is it's firstly, it's a Ziploc bag. So you can obviously Ziploc it, make it airtight, but there's an extra step you can take as well, which I'll show you as soon as I filled this up. So let's get to filling. So this is a Ziploc bag. You want to get as much air out of here as you can. What I like to do is just fold it over. You can fold it over any way you want. And that just flattens it out and then you can seal that up. So that's fairly well done. But there's one other step we need to take. And for that, we're going to use <laughs> this beast over here. Now, you don't need a really big one like this. The reason I have this is because I use it to seal the bags that I put my bottles in when I send them out to you guys. And this just makes life so much easier. So all that we do is we take this, put that on the edge and there you go. That is now sealed. So that's sealed at the top there. Nice and professional, keeps it all well sealed. Even if that there pops open, it doesn't matter because it's sealed up there. And when it gets to you guys, all you need to do is tear it there at the perforation. Nice and easy. So I am going to fill up all these bags, 65 grams per bag, and get them labeled up and ready to sell to you guys once this video goes live. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed the video and I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Until then, stay spicy.